Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a 5 color prismatic bridge deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. A deck built to leverage the 5 mana legendary enchantment on the backside of Asika, God of the Tree, which is a 3 mana 1 4 legendary creature god with vigilance that can tap for 1 mana of any color, and other legendary creatures we control also have vigilance and tap for 1 mana of any color. But the prismatic bridge is what we're really interested in the 5 mana 5 color legendary enchantment, saying at the the beginning of our upkeep, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature or planeswalker card and put it on the battlefield without having to pay its mana cost. So Prismatic Bridge, an incredibly powerful enchantment that can provide value turn after turn. Now casting the 5 mana enchantment is not that easy, we do need a lot of mana fixing, which is why we see all these different triomes in the mana base. We even have one of each pathway to help us cast Prismatic Bridge and one of each basic land alongside Cultivate and Beanstalk Giant to search those up. We also have Lotus Cobra providing additional mana fixing, and even Binding the Old Gods can search up our various green triomes to further fix our mana to make sure we can cast the Prismatic Bridge as early as possible. And then once we have Prismatic Bridge in play, it has a pretty good chance of hitting an expensive creature. The only cards we don't really want to hit with Prismatic Bridge are additional copies of Asika and or four copies of Lotus Cobra, but even hitting a Beanstalk Giant, which we can use to ramp, is still quite nice, as we'll get the Creature Half, which is a creature with power and toughness equal to the number of lands we control. We also have two copies of Kenrith the Returned King, and we can make use of all his various abilities thanks to being a five color deck. And then we also have three copies of Dream Trawler and two copies of Koma Cosmos Serpent, which is a card that can very quickly take over the game. So that's our basic game plan. Now let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At two mana we also have the full playset of Omen of the Sea, which we're playing over Maze Mind Tome, although it's a close decision between the two of them. Omen of the Sea just a little bit more immediate as we get to scry to end draw card right away and can later sacrifice it for Tuna Blue to scry to once again. And this will help us get to our Prismatic Bridge as quickly as possible. Then we also have four copies of Heartless Act as a removal spell of choice. And then of course the four copies of Lotus Cobra, which also synergizes nicely with cards like Cult Cultivate and Beanstalk Giant, as we'll be able to get additional landfall triggers. No copies of Fabled Passage in this deck, because we do want to limit our basic lands as much as possible, because if we have multiples of the same basic, we risk drawing two of them, in which case we won't be able to cast our Prismatic Bridge on curve, which is why we only have one of each basic land and no copies of Fabled Passage, otherwise we would run out of fetchable lands too quickly, and that is going to happen from time to time with our Cultivate and our Fertile Footsteps, but usually by the time we have each basic land in play we're already in the late game, so we don't really need more lands in play. Then at 3 mana, we already mentioned Cultivate. This is just very useful as it provides double mana fixing and get our two missing lands if we don't have them already. And then Fertile Footsteps, useful to ramp early. And then later in the game also provides a nice threat to close out the game and a fine hit with Prismatic Bridge. Then at 4 mana, we've got the full playset of Binding the Old Gods, which is a great removal spell, destroying target a non-land permanent on the first chapter, and on the second chapter searching for any forest to put on a battlefield tapped, and that includes non-basic forests like our various green triomes. And then on the final chapter we also gain Death Touch, which can be relevant with Kenra's Trample ability, which is the first ability we can use here on our 5 mana 5-5 five five legendary creature, which can provide both Trample and Haste with the red activated ability. So if we have both Death Touch and Trample, thanks to the third chapter of Binding, we only need to assign one damage to each blocking creature and the rest can Trample over, which can be very relevant with a large Beanstalk Giant, which can now deal a ton of damage to the opponent. Then the green ability for 1 and a green puts a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature, for 2 and a white we gain 5 life, for 3 and a blue target player draws a card, and for 4 and a black puts target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under its owner's control, so we can reanimate one of our own creatures, although we do have to be careful not to reanimate an opposing creature as the opponent will gain control of it. Then at 6 mana, 3 copies of Dream Trawler, the 3-5 flying lifelinking sphinx that gets plus 1 plus 0 whenever we draw a card, and when Dream Trawler attacks we also get to draw an additional card, and we can discard a card to give Dream Trawler hexproof until end of turn, and we also 
also have to tap it. And then our two copies of Koma, Cosmo Serpent, is 7 mana, 6-6, six, six, a legendary serpent that cannot be countered. And at the beginning of each upkeep, so that also includes the opponent's upkeep, we create a 3-3 three, three blue serpent creature token named Koma's Coil, and we can sacrifice another serpent at any time, and either tap, target permanent, and its activated abilities cannot be activated this turn, or Koma gains indestructible until end of turn. So the serpent tokens can also protect the legendary creature, so it requires a very specific removal spell to deal with Koma, something like a Soul Shatter can deal with it, or an exile based removal spell like Extinction Event or Elspeth Conquer's Death can get around the indestructible. And then of course just ramping into these creatures like Dream Trawler and Koma is also very possible thanks to all the various ramp cards and mana fixing. And then we already mentioned most of our mana base, one of each basic land, one of each pathway, and then going over the triumphs, the only one we're not playing is the Mardu colored one, since at a baseline our deck is kind of Sultai colored for the most part. So we've got four of the Zagoth triome, and then two of the Jeskai colored triome, two of the Amsan one, and two of the Teemer colored triomes as well. We do want a lot of green mana early to help us cast our various green ramp spells and mana fixing cards. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw, and this is not really an ideal hand. So we've got two of our big finishers, no Prismatic Bridge, although we do have Cultivate, which we can cast on turn three, which can help us ramp towards Dream Trawler and Coma eventually. We already have two white sources for Dream Trawler, so maybe this could work. And if we draw Prismatic Bridge, we can cast it on turn four, presumably. So we'll kick things off with... I guess a Zagoth Trium here, in case we need to Heartless Sanct on turn 2. Opponent on blue-green, and a turn 2 Cobra, which I will have to Heartless Act here. So we won't be able to Cultivate on 3, but we can still Omen. And then we'll still be able to cultivate on four into maybe a turn five Dream Trawler. The so Omen Keel, all right. So opponent playing a Cosima deck and they didn't have a third land. So they played Omen Keel to hopefully find one next turn. And we did draw a Prismatic Bridge in the meantime, so that's awesome. For now, just play this tapped and end of turn play Omen. And then what we need to find with Cultivates We've got pretty much most colors covered. Cosima can crew the Omen Keel now. Which can find more lands. In response to the trigger, I could play Omen. Uh, just to maybe make it less likely that the opponent finds a land. So, do we mind drawing the basic forests? Do we want to draw Kenrith as a question? Not especially. So I guess we bottom both. Alright, could cast Binding to destroy Cosima here. That seems reasonable. And then, which land do we play here? Black or blue? I guess black is fine. And then next turn we can get the fifth color to potentially play bridge, although there's also a chance we draw an untapped land to cast bridge next turn already. Dried of Legion Grove can crew with the Omen Kill. Which so far hasn't exiled any lanes. Alright, this time they hit blue green pathway. And then, let's see, what color do we need? I guess this turn we're gonna maybe cultivate plus heartless acts. Don't think it matters too much. At the end of the day, we'll get a white source for Dream Trawler, maybe. And then we can cultivate, leaving black untapped. 
and then get an extra blue and red, maybe. And then, I don't know if I want a Heartless Act Dryad or the Omen Kill here. Ponon seem to be struggling to hit her land drop, so I don't think we need to kill Dryad. And then next turn we finally get to resolve Prismatic Bridge. Although we could also just cast Coma instead. Alright, Aron's Epiphany. Gonna give the opponent an extra turn. So glad we got rid of the Omen Kill. We're down to 10. And we've got a lot of options here. We can play Coma, Dream Trawler, Prismatic Bridge. I think Coma is probably best since it cannot be countered on the off chance that our opponent's playing some counter spells. And then I probably still want to play an extra land out, even though we could eventually cycle. And then it shouldn't take too long to take over the game with Coma and Dream Trawler. Ooh, Ugin the Spirit Dragon is gonna have to minus seven to get rid of Coma at least. So it might just go face, but then we can kill Ugin by tapping Dryad. So yeah, Ugin just gonna minus seven to essentially exile the entire board. But we still have some leftovers here. So I think I like playing Dream Trawler now, and then we can maybe double spell Bridge and Binding in case they have another Ugin here. So I'll have to play Triumph Tapped if we want to double spell next turn. And yep, there's a second Ugin as expected. So that can minus six to exile Dream Trawler. And then we can binding Ugin, play bridge, and hopefully they're out of Ugins. So I guess we'll start by casting this. Make it less likely that uh, Auto Tapper doesn't let us cast it. And probably fine to keep land in hand in case we find another Dream Trawler. I need to give it Hexproof. Uh, let's see if we finally get to trigger Prismatic Bridge after surviving double Ugin. Epiphany. Opponent takes an extra turn. So we're at six. And Ride of Legion Grove, that's fine. And a Cultivate. Alright, so our opponent's essentially empty-handed here. Just gotta hope to hit something juicy with Prismatic Bridge. Another Dream Trawler would be nice. And Lotus Cobra, not so much. Can Cycle. Heartless Act. Probably, let's see, do we kill a bird or a dryad? A dryad I can shum block. I think the bird might actually be a bigger issue. Because dryad we can easily block if we hit like a beanstalk giant for instance, but the bird tokens can keep chipping in. So we'll kill a token. And I think I'm fine shumping here since we're so likely to hit a better ground creature. If we find Kenrith, that would also be excellent here. Alright, Esika. So another miss. I will play one land out in case we find Kenrith. Next turn we'll have more mana to use the various abilities. So hit Cobra, now Esika. Two misses. 
Although at least the Seeker can block Dryad. Ooh, Kyrabas is Sea Guard. Yeah, that's gonna be a problem. Although we hit Kenrith. Now Kenrith doesn't destroy enchantments, sadly. But our opponent's just gonna tap our team down and eventually steal either Kenrith or Prismatic Bridge. So what's the play for now? Finding another binding to destroy Kyrabas the Sea God would be nice. So I guess we'll start actually by casting Omen. And I think we got a bottom both. Could keep Heartless Act to eventually kill my own Kenrith, but that doesn't seem great. Alright, hit a land. So... Yeah, I guess we'll start by drawing here. Alright, perfect. Binding can destroy Kurobasa Sea God. And then can still use Kenrith to gain five potentially. Alright, and our opponent explodes. Kenrith is going to take over the game. We still have Prismatic Bridge, which will eventually hit more creatures. So close one here against the blue-green ramp deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice-looking hand. Turn to Omen to try and find a third land for Cultivate, and then we'll have a turn for Prismatic Bridge, hopefully. Can play this as a white source, since we've got a Sultai Triome. Opponent with a snow-covered plains. All right, I guess we could just play another Trium here to guarantee turn three cultivate, turn four bridge. Seems better than casting Omen. Opponent on black whites. Inquisition's expert can have one cultivate. We're gonna run out of lands to fetch with the third cultivate, anyways. So need a reds. And then the other color doesn't matter too much. We already have double green. Can think about casting Dream Trawler and Coma. Got double green, double white, double blue. I guess double blue we don't have just yet, so I'll get an island. All right, and hope that our Prismatic Bridge sticks around. Next turn we can Binding. Legion Angel, alright, that's a good one. And so is Koma Cosmos Serpent, so Binding destroys what does it destroy? A Legion Angel or Valkyrie? I guess we'll go with uh, Valkyrie for now. Could see removal and response to us getting the Serpent token, but that's not the case. So now we can protect Koma from any targeted spot removal or destroy effects. I'll still take a hit from Legion Angel, even though we could tap it down, since I want to keep a Serpent available. Just in case. But then starting from next turn, we can try and manage the board. Could also think about tapping the opponent's lands down. Oh no, disaster. Elspeth conquers death, one of the few clean answers to Coma. Could also go after Prismatic Bridge. We'll see here. Opponent has a difficult decision. Goes after Prismatic Bridge. All right, I think I'm okay with that. I think Koma's gonna do enough for us that we can win without Prismatic Bridge in play, which has the chance of just finding Lotus Cobra. All right, get another Trium. And this turn we can Fertile Footsteps plus Binding. And 
and then what do we bind? Do we care about Elspeth Conqueror's death? I guess it eventually gets back a creature. So might as well. And start attacking with Koma. Serpent token can attack too. I'm fine trading it for Legion Angel. Now I could tap down the opponent's lands to prevent them from casting another Elspeth Conqueror's death. But at the same time, we also want to keep some pressure going. So I think I'm just going to pass and let them untap. Maybe tapping the one black source is worth it, but we can see they can just cast another Legion Angel. All right, Kaya, that's another way they can exile Koma here. When you can walk through walls, anything. Let's yep, see. that's too bad. But we can take out Kaya with our Serpent, still have a Beanstalk we can cast, so it's not the end of the world. Creatures have Death Touch. So, three, six, eight, nine. So we can Omen plus Beanstalk. Dream Trawler looks great. Send two serpents at Kaya, one at their face. Look, I can't do everything. And then I'm probably fine to play out a swamp here and then I've cultivate to discard a dream trawler still. Can block Legion Angel. All right, Doomscar actually a pretty nice answer to this board since we'll lose everything. So opponents got all the answers here. Two Axel based removal spells for Bridge and Coma, and now Doomscar for Dream Trawler. Still have a Beanstalk Giant, and then we can start scrying with Omen. I guess we can scry on upkeep and find another Bridge and another Omen. I guess we'll keep both, and then Omen first, and then I can still bridge afterwards. Just gotta be a little careful with how we tap our mana. But I think we'll be okay here. And then we can put Forest on the bottom. All right, hopefully they're out of Exile-based effects here. Can also scry an upkeep with Omen to potentially improve our chances with Bridge. Opponent runs out another Angel. Or we can scry after the trigger to just improve our regular draw step. Um, I think I'm just gonna let the Bridge trigger resolve and then use Omen. All right, Beanstalk's not bad. And could keep a backup bridge. It's probably okay. And then for now, just play another Beanstalk Giant. Opponent has now double black, maybe blood on the snow. They do have a lot of snow lands here. Another Doomscar instead. Yep. Another Beanstalk is found. And let's see, I guess we have one basic land left in the deck to search for with Cultivate. Yeah, might as well. Play Cobra. Gonna hang on to a Sika in case they answer bridge. Another Legion Angel. Although they don't have any left to search up. So they only add two in the sideboard. 
another Cobra and Kenrith. All right, Kenrith should take over this game. So we can give the team haste and trample. Then I still have five mana left. So what happens if I attack with everyone? Eight toughness, three, 12. Yeah, I think they're just dead here since we can add two counters with Kenrith and everything tramples. But we could also start drawing cards, we could gain life. Kenrith kind of does it all, can reanimate our creatures too. I guess it would have been sweet to reanimate a Beanstalk and then give it haste, so there were a lot of lines available, but this works just fine. Sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. No prismatic bridge just yet, but a fine start with Cobra, some ramp cards and binding as interaction. Turn one Gilded Goose with Omori as companion, so it might be a mutate deck. As your opponent has their own Lotus Cobra. Yeah, I think destroying the opposing Cobra is probably not a bad idea. So Mountain can make green and binding deals with Cobra. Next turn we can play two ramp spells. And eventually draw into one of our win conditions or prismatic bridge. Alright, gem racer takes out binding before we get an extra land. And there's omen. So can cultivate or we can fertile footsteps. I think for now cultivate's fine. And then get, let's see, plains and forests. Make blue mana. I guess we can also fertile footsteps here and then still play omen. All right, don't need more Cobras. And I'll put an upkeep stop in case we want to sacrifice Omen on upkeep if it doesn't get destroyed by Gem Razor. So we're ramping nicely, just missing a win condition. Prismatic Bridge also not going to be great in the face of Gem Razor, so just naturally drawing one of our win conditions is probably better at this point. Down to 12 we go. So we can attack. And then probably just play Beanstalk. I can't fertile footsteps. Get a land, make a mana. Play a land, make a mana. I guess never mind, we can fertile footsteps and play a giant here. Good one basic land left. Down to eight we go. Symbiote. And a Gilded Goose so they can chum block or beanstalk all day long. Still nothing. Probably start by cycling here. Alright, more lanes. It's 
sack for nine. At least by chumping with a goose we can die to another gem racer being mutated on top of it. Opponent cycles. Yeah, this is gonna be close. We need to top deck something here. Opponent puts Umori in hand. And another Gilded Goose to chump. Alright, let's see what we get. Binding, alright, that does it. So I'll attack first, just to give the opponent less information. Probably not worth it to attack with Cobra. Probably could have played a land first just to increase the power on our beanstalk. Alrighty. Opponent's at 8. We're gonna have some 11 powered beanstalk giants. Oof, but uh, auspicious Terex off the top. It's gonna get in for 6. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Turn to Omen, we've got Heartless active needed. And then some ramp and binding as more interaction. So, there we go, there's one of our win conditions. Now Dream Trawler can be a little tricky to cast if we have the mana to cast turn 4 or 5 bridge. We don't necessarily have the mana to play Dream Trawler on the following turn since it's double white and um, double blue. But we'll see here whether or not we find bridge or if we try to find mana to play Dream Trawler instead. Alright, another Heartless Act probably not needed. I think I'll take the land. Then we can play this as a blue source, which is also useful for Dream Trawler. And cultivates. Get a Plains for sure. And then we already have double blue. I guess I'll get a forest. Fairy Vandal end of turn, so some sort of flash deck. Fairy Vandal can be difficult to kill with Heartless Act if they put a counter on it. For now, I guess we can Fertile Footsteps and then still Heartless Act. I don't really want to tap out for Binding into 3 open mana. So... Can get an extra Swamp, so we can maybe double Heartless Act in the same turn. Or I could get another Blue Source, so we have double blue, double green for Coma. Opponent's gonna negate, that's fine. And we'll kill the Vandal. Alright, so now we still have Binding for a future threat. And that can also get a Triome to help me cast Dream Trawler. It's a Fairy Master of Time. Perfect target for binding. Coma is also going to be a good one and is uncounterable. So yeah, we cannot sadly play Dream Trawler, but binding on Teferi looks good here. Opponent gets to plus one to one last time. See, stolen by the Fae, go to the graveyard. And an island. Alright. So next turn we get to search one more land. If we draw an untapped land we can cast Coma. If not, we've got Heartless Act and Omen of the Sea we can still make use of. Opponent's gonna foretell. Could be the counter spell, could be the draw two. Alright, so we want to get a white land here, so in Datha Trium it is. And then I get to play Coma, which is uncounterable. So it lines up nicely against the mono blue counterspell deck. 
Unsubstantiate. Alright, that's one of the few ways to temporarily deal with coma. But it's gonna come down again. Now we can also play Dream Trawler, but still gonna play Coma if we suspect any counterspells here. The Cosmo Serpent has arrived. Our opponent gonna cycle a Shark Typhoon for four. That's alright. Got plenty of answers for the shark token. Sanctuary can get back. Unsubstantiates. Sure. If they have a card draw spell, they can maybe draw into Unsubstantiate and play it right now. So they're gonna maybe try and tempo us out with a shark token. Alright, and all runs Epiphany is definitely one way to do that. So, I might want to just Tap the shark here to prevent four damage. Do get an extra shark token before they can unsubstantiate so we can tap the shark down once again. All their opponents gonna be hold in response, so we can't use Koma's ability to tap down the shark, which is fair. So they're gonna hit us for six. And then the question is whether we replay Coma or if we want to maybe answer the board first, although I feel like replaying Coma is still the play. If our opponent taps out, we can get a lifelinking flyer in play, which is also pretty good. Prismatic Bridge, all right, so we could, let's see, Heartless Act, bait out a counter spell and then Prismatic Bridge. Heartless Act could bait out a counterspell and then we could Dream Trawler as well, so we've got some options. Probably start by attacking. Yeah, I think I kind of like the Heartless Act play. Alright, Lofty Denial will counter it. Will decline. And then just play Dream Trawler. Seems a little safer than Prismatic Bridge, on the off chance that we end up missing a few times. Dream Trawler can now block Shark Token. And we still have a Koma Cosmo Serpent, so... Feeling pretty good about this game. Alright, Teferi. Alright, who's ready for a good time? Can temporarily... Remove Dream Trawler. It's gonna minus three on Dream Trawler. Could give it Hexproof here by discarding a card, which is probably reasonable. Just so that next turn I can still attack with it. And then I think sadly get rid of Bridge, since Binding is still an answer to a big shark token and Coma is Coma. So the ferry down, take six. Get to untap. Attack. And then now Koma can tap down the shark token again. Fairy Vandal's fine. So even if they have an Ulrun's Epiphany here, it wouldn't be the end of the world. It's gonna be Heraldic Banner pumping the creatures. Pretty nice combo with the Ravens. And then we'll take six.
And we should have lethal on the way back. The Ferris Angel's Insight's not gonna cut it here. Alright, so a sweet game here against Mono Blue. They definitely put up a fight with Unsubstantiates, temporarily dealing with Coma. Got to have some close and interesting games with Prismatic Bridge. Overall, the card is susceptible to some widely played cards in Standard. Think of Binding the Old Gods, can cleanly deal with it. Elspeth Conquers Death, so there's definitely answers out there before you get any triggers from Prismatic Bridge, so that always feels bad. But if it sticks around for a turn or two, it will usually take over a game, especially once we start hitting creatures like Kenrith or Koma. So a lot of fun when it all comes together. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.